Hi, I'm Peter Vila. Thanks for checking out this video. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the lips. What it really comes down to is what's going on with your lips and how can we make them appear more youthful. So people that may not be super happy with the appearance of their lips tend to complain about two things. One of them is that the lip is just too thin and that usually what that means is in my language as a plastic surgeon is the red lip is too thin. The other problem is that as we age, the lip can sort of age as well. And what people may not notice, but what's actually happening is that the upper lip is actually lengthening or getting longer. And so the white lip is getting longer as the red lip looks like it's shrinking. And it does actually shrink a little bit because we do lose some of the volume of the lip. But also what's happening is that it sort of rolls forward because as this lip extends, the upper white lip gets longer, it covers up more of the red lip. So then you might notice when your mouth is open, you don't see any dental show, any teeth, and you also just don't see as much of the red lip as, as you might like to. So there's a couple different ways we can address that. So in the 80s, the surgical lip lift was described, and what that is is basically making incisions under the nose. It's called the subnasal lip lift, and you reduce the length of the upper white lip. And what that does is it actually improves the red lip show. It gives you a more pouty appearance to your lip. So by rolling the lip up like this, what you're doing is you're shortening the white lip and lengthening, so to speak, the red lip by rolling it out. And so that's a really great procedure. And then suddenly in the late 90s and early 2000s, lip fillers were FDA approved. And so that sort of changed the game for a while. Now, lip fillers have been around for a long time. People have been injecting a lot of things to achieve a more youthful appearance. And some of those things in the early days, back in the 80s and 70s even, were things like collagen, silicone. A lot of those have fallen out of favor because they're just not as safe and they're not as predictable. When fillers came along, the first FDA approved filler in the United States was actually Restylane. That was in 1996. So it's been, it hasn't been around that long. Slowly, some of the other ones came along. Juvederm came along, which I think has really become a lot more popular. So Restylane, Juvederm, the whole Juvederm line, all of those are hyaluronic acid fillers. So what does that mean? Hyaluronic acid is basically, you can think of it as sort of the lubricant in our body. There's a lot of hyaluronic acid in the joints and in our eyes and in the skin. Okay. So it's everywhere in our body. It's a naturally occurring substance. And what we learned was that you can inject hyaluronic acid and the body will tolerate it quite well because it is a naturally occurring substance and that will generate a little bit of plump. So over the last 20 years, we really learned that hyaluronic acid fillers are really effective. They don't work for everything. And there are definitely situations where fillers are overused and maybe not used in the right patient. And so really when you see things that just don't look right, like duck lips, for example, we'll talk about why that happens. So with fillers coming along, Everybody's talking about lip fillers these days. Why am I even talking about a lip lift? Well, there's some patients that fillers are no longer the right option for, or just it's just it never was the right option. That's why it's really important to talk to your plastic surgeon about this is what your concern is, and they can talk to you about what might be the best options to address that. Fillers are really great to add a little bit of volume, and this can definitely be overdone. And when you see people with like duck lips, for example, what, what's happening is that the filler, there's only so much room in the red lip for filler. Over time, that can sort of migrate up into the white lip and down into the white lip. And when that happens, it, it looks unnatural. That's when you see this sort of appearance going on because there's so much filler that it sort of has squeezed out of the red lip into the white lip. Sometimes you also see this with just filler that was just placed in the wrong place. So if you have somebody that's inexperienced doing lip filler, that can certainly happen where you get filler in strange places that you don't want it. And then it has to be dissolved out and either refilled or something else. So in my hands, I think lip filler is great for the younger patient, maybe with thin lips who just wants a little bit more pout and wants to add a little bit of oomph to the lips. And filler is basically a minimal downtime procedure. How do I do it? I use a hybrid of a cannula and a needle technique. So I use a cannula to fill the lip. I try to focus most of the filler here in the central two thirds of the upper lip. Usually the lower lip doesn't need much, but I will put a little bit just to make them appropriate and to keep the ratio looking natural and nice. And so you get a little bit of extra volume. When you get filler, generally I tell people, you know, don't run a marathon that night. Don't, don't do any serious physical activity. But by the next day, it's pretty much set. If you feel any lumps and bumps, you can kind of roll it, massage it out, and that will sort of absorb water over time, and it will look super swollen the next day. But by the next week, the swelling will come down, and that's really what you're looking at as far as the final result. So it really takes about a week to see what the final result is going to be. 
from lip filler. If somebody wants a lot of lip filler, then it's gonna be a stage-wise process. We're gonna have to inject a little bit, let it do its thing, and then come back and inject a little bit more until we get somewhere that is where you and I are both happy. And if you try to do a lot of filler at once, that's, that's when you start running into filler migration where the filler is going into places that you don't really want it. Now, a lip lift, that's really for a different indication. Lip fillers in an older patient can be helpful, but what happens is that you're gonna get a strange appearance when you have this really long upper white lip and then a really, really plump red lip. That looks weird, that can look unnatural. And so for those patients, that's when you're talking about a lip lift. How do you do a lip lift? Most surgeons these days, what they do is they place the incisions right under the nose so that it hides right at the junction between the lip and the nose. And what that achieves again is just it kind of rolls up the lip so that you're shortening the white lip and lengthening the red lip. And that really adds a nice touch to the lips and makes them look much more youthful. It looks like there's more volume in the red lip, even though all we've done is just bring up that white lip a little bit. So one of the tells that people have had a procedure done is when you might have, for example, very youthful appearing eyes, and then the rest of the face looks very aged. And so I think it's good to try and maintain facial harmony where if we're gonna do like a bleph, for example, and there's a lot of jowling and the upper lip, to do all those procedures at the same time because that way you have one recovery and when you come out looking, when you're all healed up, it looks great and really there's harmony in the face rather than the disconnect, which is, can sometimes be a tell. So when you're talking about what's the best procedure for you, whether you're talking about lip fillers or lip lift, I think they're both excellent procedures and it really comes down to going to somebody who knows what they're doing, has experience, and can really connect with you and guide you down the best procedure that's right for you and your anatomy. Thanks for checking out this video.